Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, second video in our theories of postmodernity, and in this one we're going to talk about Daniel Bell. I told you in the intro that he was one of my heroes in graduate school, um, and I spaced on one of the books. It's called The Coming of Post uh, Post Industrial Society. It's a theorist of post industrial society, which I'll define in a second. Um, that was written in the early 70s, and then his one that I just loved was The Cultural Contradictions of Capitalism, which came out in the mid-1970s. So he's thinking about these things um, about 20 to 30 years after World War II. Um, he is, Daniel Bell is a modernist. I talked about that before. He believes that you can understand society objectively and it stands uh, it, it's worth pointing out that most sociologists most people go in to sociology to try to understand the world this whole idea of a postmodern perspective is it's a minority um perspective within sociology but i'm going to argue even though i'm a modernist that there is that there's real value in understanding it and in at least critiquing yourself from that perspective but Bell is a, he is a modernist talking about the postmodern, or as he calls it, the post-industrial world. Um, and he believes that it is important to do this because as a modernist, he believes you can make progress. Um, and so understanding reality as it is, is important. So here's the reality that he, uh, that he sees and that he is concerned about. Um, we begin roughly this class with Karl Marx, who's talking about the problems of industrial capitalism. And Daniel Bell is writing a good 100 to 130 years after Marx. And he says, you know what? In the 1970s, I'm looking around and I think we are leaving the era of industrial society. Marx, for Marx, it's a new thing. People working in factories rather than working on the farm. Um, Bell looks at it and says, people aren't working in factories anymore. Obviously, some are, but that is a declining um, a declining percentage of the jobs that exist and the jobs that will need to be filled. Um, he says, we are entering a society that is not based on making things, but is based on providing services. And most of the jobs are going to be in the service sector. And that doesn't mean like waiting tables, although that clearly is one that has grown um, since the time of Karl Marx, for example. Um, but also in terms of, you know, a lot of my students are going into law. That's not producing a thing. That is providing a service. Um, a, lot of my, a lot of my students are going to be doctors or physical therapists. Those providing services. Um, I don't produce a thing. I provide a service. So, you can see, I mean, almost all of you are probably, at least my experience from reading my students' work, is that you're not going into the production of a thing. And to the extent that you're going to be part of an organization that produces things, you're not going to be the, doing the actual production yourself. I have students who are going to go into advertising. So advertising is about a thing, right? Trying to sell a person a car or whatever. But the advertiser isn't putting together the car. They're not making a thing. They are creating a service, trying to persuade people. That's what um, Bell is watching this happen in the 1970s. Okay, so how does that happen? Here's the issue. And this is part of the reason I loved reading him is that he's both historian and sociologist. He says, okay, uh, I talked in the last lecture about World War II and how it like this is this watershed moment it combined with world war one where modernity the modern perspective comes under question well something else happens in world war ii which is america finishes the war as like the superpower in the world and um america had before the war been in the great depression and it comes out of the war in an incredibly wealthy uh situation it has the largest middle class that America has ever had. Um, it's not all great for everybody. I mean, we're talking about we're still in Jim Crow. But in terms of, so I, and I don't want to minimize that, and it's not an easy place for women either. Um, 
I don't want to romanticize the 1950s, but the reality is we have the biggest middle class, the wealthiest middle class relative to the upper classes that we had ever had and that and much wealthier than we have today, which means we have all of these people with money to spend. And so one of the thing that happens is that American corporations want to make money. So they start creating things to sell to this great mass of people who suddenly have money. The other thing that happens is in the process of doing that and kind of going along with the, prog the progress of science and technology in general, we eventually get to the point right about when Bell is writing actually in the 1970s, um, we get to the point where our, um, sorry, our communication technology and our transportation technology is developed enough that we can have managers living in America while production happens uh, outside of this country. Those two things together, the creation of a consumer society and the creation of the, the movement of, of industrial society out of America are, are what we're going to think of as post-industrial society or post-modern society. Those two terms we're going to use synonymously. Okay. Um, so, why post-industrial society? Because we've got a wealthy middle class who can be consumers and because we develop technologically enough to be able to move the industrial production away from America and have jobs that are more service-oriented, um, knowledge-based in America. That's why. So what happens in post-industrial society? I've talked a little bit about it, but let me go into some details here. Um, first, culturally, we as a nation become consumers. Now you and I are used to this. This is a radical change that starts in the 1950s and just continues up to this day. Um, we get told that the fulfillment of our desires is central to our experience. We get a desire, we look for a thing to buy that will meet that, that will fulfill that desire. That is an unusual historically, even just in America, that's an unusual center point for a culture, the fulfillment of my desires. Capitalism begins, if you remember back to Weber, which if you don't, I'll refresh your memory. Capitalism begins with this Protestant ethic of, I am going to work really hard and save my money and not enjoy it. This is what um, what Daniel Bell is going to call the cultural contradiction of capitalism. In order to fuel our economy, we have to turn people into consumers. We have to make them want things. But wanting things is not really the way capitalism is oriented. It's supposed to be based on this sort of ascetic, I'm going to work hard and save. But to, I, I don't want to get too far in, like ahead of myself. Culturally, we become consumers is one of the big changes. Um, what that means in addition to the fulfillment of our desires, it means we as a society become dominated by ideas that are oriented toward the self, self-gratification, self-realization. It's not about sacrifice. It's not about delayed gratification. It is all about me and all about now. Um, these values, as I just, now I'm catching up with where I said I didn't want to get ahead of myself. These values contradict with the old fashioned ideas of self-discipline. Consumer society is not about discipline. It is about, it's about the exact opposite. It is about um, impulse. Um, about restraint. That's an old fashioned idea that consumer society, it's no, just do it now. Um, delayed gratification. That's capitalism, right? That's the, or at least the Calvinist Protestant ethic. We're not about that in a consumer society. We're not about discipline or restraint or delayed gratification. We're the exact opposite of those things. Get it for me now because I want it. Amazon will deliver stuff to you like almost, I mean, we're getting close to, I push a button and it shows up at my door same day. That's so self-focused, it's incredible. We don't think about what about the workers? What about the people who are getting mowed down by Amazon's trucks? We don't think about any of that stuff because consumer society is about me. 
Uh, I'm not trying to make you feel bad. It's about me as well as you. Um, so that's what it's about culturally. That's what I mean by we become consumers. What happens in post-industrial society? We become consumers who are obsessed with ourselves. Social structurally is the other thing that happens. So our social structure changed, and I already talked about this. Positions are less about making things, more about providing services. So I talked about some of the services, medical care, psychological services, um, legal services. Today, we've got even things like personal training, uh, dog, like people who will come and walk your dog, people who will prepare meals for you and put them at your house, all kinds of services that get provided. Um, and what this adds up to is a change. In order to get, except for the last couple of them, but most of the jobs that you guys are after, in order to get those jobs, you need an education. And so, whereas it used to be that you could lead a very solid working class, but working class could afford a house. Working class could afford a car. Working class could afford one person working, the other person staying home without with just a high school degree but those jobs are production jobs they're making goods and since those jobs are gone there now is service jobs either high-end service like being a college professor or a lawyer or something like that or low-end service working in fast food being a greeter at walmart that type of thing and so we end up and and those jobs are People get sorted into one of those jobs, the high-level jobs, high-level service, or low-level service, based on education. So education becomes a really, really important service. Like, I mean, me talking to you about this is considered really important, even though this doesn't help make a car, this doesn't help make food, right? But because it helps people get to those high-level service jobs, my job is considered important. Um, yeah, let's leave it there. That is, oh, and then the last part of what happens in post-industrial society. So I've talked about the culture. I've talked about the change in our social structure. Uh, the third thing is that the stuff we consume comes from other countries. And a lot of it does. That's kind of self-explanatory. Okay. So what is the problem? Okay. So here are two problems. One of which I think is, has not proven to be true, but I mean, Karl Marx was wrong about the revolution. Daniel Bell can be wrong about stuff too. Bell was worried about the cultural contradictions of capitalism. If you tell people it's all about them, who's going to work hard enough to be able to lead America, America is eventually going to fall. Um, it's not going to be able to sustain its high producing economy and it won't stay as a superpower. And I think that one has not proven to be the case. I think um, part of the reason was that uh, that America has embraced women in higher education in a way that it hadn't before. Um, and so women, you know, make up more students in colleges. They do better on average. Um, they're still discriminated against, sorry, in, um, in terms of the economy, but that is changing as well. So I think by America having when Daniel Bell was looking at this, he was looking at the cultural contradictions of capitalism really for men. Um, I mean, he wasn't thinking about it that way, but that's androcentrism for you. He was thinking, well, what if people are being told, people being men, that you it's all about you? And guys have kind of, I mean, no offense to guys, I'm a guy, but that we have kind of gotten the message that, you know, being in school, being told what to do, that's not for you. You should you know, you, you're your own man, you're a superhero, you don't have to listen to what some middle-aged guy is telling you. Um, and guys have performed worse in school because of that. But I don't think his worry that with a culture of me, 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 we've ended up falling as a, as a country. The other worry, though, is that we are creating two educational classes, the educated and the less educated. And I don't mean to assign different values to those two groups because I don't think me having a master's degree makes me a better person. But it does make me lead to or is correlated with me being more informed or differently informed about the way our world works 
than people who aren't as educated. And it puts me at an advantaged position in terms of getting a high paying job in, a, in the service economy compared to a person who doesn't go to college. And I think what we've seen over, so I'm recording this in 2021, over since, you know, since 2016, at least with the rise of Donald Trump, we have seen this kind of backlash against the quote unquote educated elite who's out of touch with the quote unquote real Americans. And we've had this divide. And um, I think that that has been a problem. And I think um, judging from January 6, 2021, when a bunch of Trump supporters stormed the uh, stormed the Capitol and we had violence, we had a violent insurrection for the first time in American history on the Capitol's, uh, on the Capitol in Washington, D.C., I think you could trace some of that back to Daniel Bell and the idea that we've created a social structure in which you have to have a certain amount of education to have a chance at a high paying job. And other people who we have said, we value you um, because you are a good, earnest, hardworking, work with your hands type of person, they're being left behind. Okay, um, that's it for Daniel Bell. That orients us a little bit specifically on the idea of what has changed from the industrial society to post-industrial society. That kind of orients us to the time period we're in and it introduces a really important idea, which is this idea of consumerism and a consumerist culture. That we're going to see, not in the next video, but we're going to see that come back um, later on. And, and particularly this idea of, of meanness. Um, so we'll get to that. But first, we need to get to our first theorist who's going to theorize from a knowledge needs to be considered subjectively. There's not just one objective reality. We need to see it from multiple perspectives. And that's Michel Foucault. I'll talk to you about him in the next video.